Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. With Season 7 of The Clone Wars returning tomorrow, I wanted to take some time to share with you some of my favorite arcs from the series. For a series that has released 6 seasons already, there is no shortage of story arcs to choose from. But let's delve into 7 of my favorite arcs from Star Wars The Clone Wars. Starting us off is the Geonosis storyline from Season 2, which begins with Episode 5, Landing at Point Rain, and concludes with Episode 8, Brain Invaders. Episode 5 and 6 are two of my favorite Clone Wars episodes, and this arc is really fun. Landing at Point Rain specifically is such a fantastic episode, and is a perfect example of why the Clone Wars series is awesome. It's basically the opening of Saving Private Ryan, but in Star Wars The Clone Wars. It's so great. We get to see some great Jedi action in the midst of a battle, while also seeing the brutality of the Clone Wars conflict. For this story arc, the Separatists have retaken Geonosis, which has allowed them to build a new droid foundry that has been pumping out droids, bolstering the Separatist war machine. The Jedi, comprised of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano, and Ki-Adi Mundi, lead the Republic army against Poggle the Lesser with the goal of destroying the foundry capturing Poggle and to retake Geonosis. Landing at Point Rain is a wild ride from start to finish and seeing the chaos of the battle unfold is something else. I love the scene where Kiati Mundi and the clone troopers he's leading are attacked in a cave by Geonosians and we see some clone troopers just scorch them with flamethrowers. I remember watching this episode for the first time and thinking, yeah, this is not strictly a kid show. The next several episodes in the story arc give us great scenes and action featuring Anakin, Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, Luminara Unduli, and Barriss Offee. Next in my list is Count Dooku turning on Asajj Ventress. This season 3 arc, which begins with episode 12, titled Night Sisters, and ends with episode 15, Witches of the Mist, is another favorite of mine. In this story arc, Palpatine informs Count Dooku that Asajj Ventress has grown too powerful and must be eliminated, resulting in Dooku attempting to kill Ventress, but not succeeding, and Asajj plotting against Count Dooku. One of the things that I absolutely loved about the clone Wars was that we were introduced to many new characters, some of which wound up becoming my favorite characters in all of Star Wars, such as Ahsoka Tano as well as Asajj Ventress, and the fact that we also get to see many cool planets that we previously hadn't gotten to see before. Asajj was really introduced in Star Wars Clone Wars, but that's not really considered canon, and I enjoy the Clone Wars version of Asajj much more. We also get to see Asajj's homeworld of Dathomir and Dooku's homeworld of Sereno for the first time. Additionally, we're introduced to Asajj's former clan, the Night Sisters, which were a dark side wielding clan of women, as well as the clan's leader, Mother Talzin, a powerful dark side wielder, who was powerful enough that eventually Darth Sidious wanted her eliminated so as not to be a threat to him. We are also introduced in this story arc to the monstrous Savage Opress, brother to Darth Maul, who is taken on as an apprentice by Count Dooku, and we get to see, at least to some degree, how the Sith train their apprentices and or assassins, which I loved seeing. This story arc also gives us one of my favorite lightsaber duels in the series, when Asajj and two Night Sisters, invisible from Night Sister magics, attack Dooku with Jedi lightsabers. This is an arc I've gone back to multiple times just for the Night Sisters episode alone, but also because we're introduced to Savage Opress and get to see him train under Dooku. Immediately following that arc, we then get the Mortis arc, which is another wild ride of a story. This story arc, which begins begins with episode 15, Overlords, and ends with episode 18, Ghosts of Mortis, sees Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Ahsoka being sent by the Jedi Order to the Sorelithium system following a transmission the Jedi receive, which includes a 2,000-year-old outdated Jedi distress code. Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Ahsoka venture into wild space to investigate and the trio unexpectedly find themselves within the ethereal realm of Mortis. From there we get some insight into the Force and are introduced to three powerful Force wielders. The Father, the Son, and the Daughter, beings that are so powerful in the Force that they could not dwell in the material world anymore. 
The daughter is the embodiment of the light side, the son the embodiment of the dark side, and the father works to keep them in check, maintaining balance in the Force. The father has brought the three Jedi here, since Anakin is believed to be the chosen one that will bring balance to the Force, and hopes that Anakin will replace him in keeping the daughter and son in check as the father is on his last legs of life. The story arc is trippy as hell and definitely an arc from this series that I'd highly recommend. One of my favorite moments from the arc is when Anakin gets a force vision where he sees his future and everything that will transpire culminating in him going down the path of the dark side and becoming Darth Vader. We also get a force ghost, Qui-Gon, that appears before Obi-Wan which is awesome. The next story arc is The Gathering on Ilum. This is a story arc from Season 5, which begins with Episode 6, The Gathering, and concludes with Episode 9, A Necessary Bond. Lightsabers and Jedi were what made me fall in love with Star Wars, so naturally, any story that shares information and knowledge about lightsabers and their construction is a story that I have to consume, and Episode 6 of Season 5, titled The Gathering, is no exception. The episode opens with Ahsoka leading a group of Jedi younglings to the sacred Jedi Temple on the planet Ilum, where they'll be tasked with finding and acquiring their kyber crystals they'll use to construct their lightsaber. In the next episode, while en route back to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, the Jedi younglings now with their newly acquired kyber crystals will begin construction of their lightsabers. We're then introduced to lightsaber architect and designer Hugh Ang, who for a thousand generations had taught Jedi younglings, including Master Yoda, how to build their lightsabers. Hugh Ang meets with each of the younglings, providing insight and guidance on crafting their lightsabers. I absolutely love these two episodes so much. The arc continues for another two episodes and we get to see the Jedi younglings in action, Hondo Anaka and his pirates come into the story, as well as General Grievous. This is a wonderful story arc and I loved seeing the younglings having to acquire their crystals, getting introduced to Huang, and seeing the younglings construct their lightsaber. Next on my list is Maul, the Shadow Collective, and the Mandalore story arc. This season 5 arc begins with episode 14 titled Eminence and concludes with episode 16, The Lawless. Darth Maul and Savage Opress join forces with Death Watch, planning to take over Mandalore. To do so, they begin enlisting criminal syndicates into their ranks, such as Black Sun and the Pike Syndicate, forming the Shadow Collective. As Maul and company work on fully controlling Mandalore and ousting Duchess Satine cries, Obi-Wan comes to help his friend and the woman he loves only to see Maul kill her, which is just gut-wrenching to see. Poor Obi-Wan, my man can't catch a break. On top of that, we get a badass duel between Maul and Pre Vizsla, as well as a duel between Maul, Savage, and Darth Sidious, which is so great. This story arc is seriously incredible and further proof of just how great the Clone Wars is at its highest points. Immediately following the Maul and Mandalore arc, we then get Ahsoka leaving the Jedi Order. If you want a story that will leave you morose by the end of it, then man, this is the story arc for you. This arc is comprised of the final four episodes of Season 5, opening with a bombing taking place in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, and Anakin and Ahsoka are tasked with investigating and identifying the culprit. During their investigation, they identify a woman by the name of Leta Tormund that may be the culprit and bring her into custody. Leta then asks to speak solely to Ahsoka, and once Ahsoka arrives at the detention center she's in, informs Ahsoka that the idea to bomb the Jedi Temple came from a Jedi. We see Leta then is force choked, making it look like Ahsoka was the person that choked and killed her. From there, Ahsoka goes on the run, as she's being hunted by Republic forces and the Jedi, resulting in the Jedi Council deciding to kick Ahsoka out of the Jedi Order. Asajj Ventress eventually makes another appearance, as she's now working as a bounty hunter, which was revealed in the previous season, and I love her bounty hunter outfit. Although Ahsoka is eventually cleared of all charges, as the true culprit is discovered, she still decides to leave the Jedi Order. While her decision to leave the Jedi Order led her to surviving Order 66 and the Jedi Purge, her conversation with Anakin as she walked away from the Jedi Temple always feels like a gut punch whenever I watch these episodes. That scene never fails to make me feel totally dejected and dispirited. Lastly, 
the Yoda story arc that concludes Season 6. Yoda has always been my favorite character from Star Wars, so it's no shock that I love the final three episodes from Season 6. These episodes are somewhat connected to the Mortis trilogy and also help expand upon our knowledge of the Force. The arc begins with Yoda hearing the voice of Qui-Gon Jinn, which sets him on a journey that provides him with greater knowledge and understanding of the Force. Yoda has trippy Force visions. He eventually winds up meeting five priestesses of the Force, possibly the Wills. He travels to the ancient Sith world of Moraband, where he enters a Sith temple and is met by the ghost of Darth Bane, bringing Darth Bane into canon. It's just awesome as hell. Like the Mortis arc, this trilogy of episodes has moments that are so trippy but help expand our understanding of the Force as fans. It's a fantastic story arc and was an excellent way to have previously ended the series. That was until we learned we're getting one more season of episodes. So there you have it. Those are seven of my favorite story arcs from The Clone Wars. I love this show and have watched it so many times over the years and I cannot wait for season 7 episodes to drop. I have a feeling we're in for a treat guys. But what are some of your favorite episodes from the series? And what do you guys think about the 7 arcs I chose? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's On Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's On Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.